So this is a, a, a canjo, a soup can, a piece of wood, uh, some tuners, guitar strings, and then this is a little uh, piezo electric uh, buzzer, but it works pretty well as a pickup. I'm not really much of a musician, but it's fun to make these things and just noodle around with them. I wrote a book called Made by Hand, and it was about kind of trying to take control over more of the things that I use in my everyday life. You know, I started growing my own vegetables and raising chickens, and I became a beekeeper, and I found out about uh, making sauerkraut, how easy it was to make, and also the probiotic value. I found that I wasn't getting sick as often. Really, even more important, the food was really delicious. So I, you know, once a month or so make like a gallon of sauerkraut. And it's pretty easy to make. There's only two ingredients, salt and cabbage. Okay. I start out by coring the cabbage just to get that stem part out because it's kind of tough. Once you get this out, you can just chop up the cabbage. But since I have been making it for a while, I use this like a giant sized cheese grater called a mandolin or a mandoline. You can use any color cabbage you want. I like using this red cabbage just because I like the color. Growing your own food and preparing it and preserving it. There's a lot of bang for the buck in that. And if you do something, you know, like make a robot, for instance, and which I think is a fun, you know, a great thing to do. But once you build the robot and it, you know, moves around the room or something, it's kind of like, okay, neat but it doesn't really have a, a big effect on, on your life in the same way that food does. Okay, I've gone close enough with this cap. And my rule of thumb is about one tablespoon of salt per head of cabbage. And the kind of salt that you need uh, should be uh, unidized salt because iodine will actually inhibit the fermentation process. I'll get my container that I use. I used to make it in these one gallon crocks. They're really attractive. I w would get problems once in a while with spoilage. Ever since I discovered this device, I've started using it and I really like it. It's called Picklemeister. You can just look it up online. Several places sell it. It's just a one gallon glass jar with a lid. And once you get your uh, sauerkraut or your cab shredded cabbage packed in there, you put on this little air trap. It's like a one way vent. You put water in here and what it allows is the gas to come out when it's, when it's fermenting, it, it outgasses a little bit, but air that has dust and, and mold just gets stuck in the water. I've never had a mold problem once using it. And so once I, I have this in here, I just start packing it down with my fists. That's the key is to get the shredded cabbage under the surface of the liquid. Any kind of cabbage that's sticking up above the surface, it's susceptible to mold. All right, so here we go with another one. Depending on the size of a head of cabbage, it takes between three to six heads of cabbage to make a gallon of sauerkraut. These are really uh, liquid dense heads of cabbage and that's good because I'm going to get a lot of sauerkraut juice. I don't know if it's an acquired taste, but sauerkraut juice is delicious. What I do now is take a baggie, add a little bit of salt, fill it up with water. And then that way, if the bag happens to leak, it'll be brine that's basically at the same saltiness level. And then that's like a form-fitting lid to keep the air from touching the cabbage. So the final step is to put a bowl underneath here because liquid is definitely going to come all the way out of here and bubble out and run off the sides as part of the fermentation process. I usually like to just put it in a closet and uh, in three days, I take it out and put this whole thing in the refrigerator and uh, I have my gallon of sauerkraut that I can just consume straight from the jar or make, uh, you know, put into different recipes. You know, natural peanut butter where all the oil and then it's like rock hard at the bottom when you try to stir it, the oil gets all over you. So I'm working on this thing where I'll put a peanut butter jar in there and every 24 hours it will rotate 180 degrees and we'll keep it consistently smooth. So it's just something I have to finish making, but uh, the prototype uh, works pretty well. Something that I like to have, it's really tasty. It's miso, garlic, bacon, and sauerkraut. And uh, it's just got a really good flavor that I crave a lot. The only downside it was his is maybe a little bit 
salty, you know, you might want to vary it and, you know, skip the miso or use a little bit less miso or something like that.